So one of the things that we've always heard and we've always visualized is the golf swing is a circle and the club's going to be coming down, making contact, and then coming back up. And we visualize this being a very circular motion. Well, if we have a circular golf swing, it's going to be extremely difficult to be consistent. I'm going to go over the true path the club takes coming through contact. I'm going to talk about how there's a flat spot that really good golfers use to be very, very consistent and how you can do that for yourself with the drills at the end. I'm super excited to show you that, guys. This is going to make a world of difference in your consistency. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so first let's talk about what is the circular golf swing versus the flat swing and how the pros are using a flat spot in their swing to actually hit the ball a little bit better, or actually a lot better, a lot more consistent. It makes some things a lot easier. In the last half of this video, I'm going to give you some drills to show you how to get this flat spot in your swing. So first, let's go over the circular swing. And we all, uh, we've seen this a thousand times when people use a hula hoop or the giant circles to practice their swing. And the club comes down, it meets, meets a low spot, and then immediately comes back up. And that's very, very inconsistent, especially if you're going to take a divot using that type of an arc. It's very difficult to be consistent every time. Let's imagine that I'm doing that circular swing and my, my club comes down, I'm coming down into the ball and I hit and I hit the ground and the ball at the exact same time. So my, the, my circle's coming down and meeting that. I'm still on a descending blow and I hit the, the ball on the ground at the exact same time. That's going to be a great contact and really you can use any kind of swing you want and as long as you come down that exact same spot every time, you're going to be fine, you're going to hit it pretty good. It's pretty daggone hard to do. I don't know very many people that can do that consistently. So let's imagine we take that same idea there and now all of a sudden our circle's a little farther back and that ball is an inch and a half forward from where we were just at at contact. So now the ball is in the middle. We're coming down on that circular blow. We hit the ground an inch and a half behind the golf ball. The club's still moving down that circle. And when we meet our low, low spot, well, that's a big time chunk. We're gonna really lay the sod over that golf ball that ball is probably going to go 15 feet because we're hitting so much dirt coming down through there. And then if we're doing the, uh, the opposite way where we actually come down on that circle, meet our low spot and then start to come back up, now we're going to hit the golf ball thin. So there's a very small margin for error. The pros and the very good golfers out there, the very good consistent golfers out there have actually a flat spot in their swing. So what's happening as they're coming down, the club has some lag to it. And then as they're getting closer, the handle is actually moving up as the club releases. So what's happening is the, as the ball, as the club reaches the ground, gets close to the ground, it's coming in very, very shallow. So it's going to arc. It's coming in shallow for a long distance, let's say four or five inches, six inches as it's getting into the ground. And then it releases wide as it's coming on out of there. Let's take those same three examples again. If we hit the ball and the ground at the same time, like we talked about in the first example, it's going to be a clean strike no matter what you do. If that ball's an inch and a half forward, if I have a flatter spot in my swing, that club's going to shallow out. I'm going to catch a little bit of dirt, probably not going to be perfect contact, but it's still going to be a really good shot. It's going to be on the green, going to be pretty close to the hole as I'm doing that. And even if I'm three inches in front, that would be the one where I came up and hit the ball thin. Maybe I've brushed the ground and I'm starting to come back up a little bit, but I'm still going to have a pretty good consistent strike on the ball. It's going to be around the green. It's not going to be beautiful, but I'm going to be within 10 or 15 yards of the green. I'm going to be able to get it up and up and down instead of being 10 or 15 feet in front of my last shot. So notice next time you're watching the pros, look at their divots. They're paper thin. They're five or six inches long, about the shape of a dollar bill. And they're really, really thin and squares are coming into that ball so they can be more consistent. Hit a little behind the ball, hit a little bit in front of the ball. Everything's going to work out pretty well. And that's how they can hit hundreds of shots. I could dump over a ball, a bucket of a thousand golf balls and hit all those with pretty clean contact. Whereas a lot of players, they got that, that very steep circular angle of attack as they're coming into the ball and it's very, very difficult. You have to have great hand-eye coordination to hit all those consistent, consistently. So now let's go over, let's do some drills to actually get this flat spot in our swing. I'm going to explain a little bit more and anybody can do this. I'm super excited. This is going to be awesome. Let's go ahead and get started those drills. All right, so there's three things that are happening that are going to contribute to making this flat spot so you can be very consistent. The first one is what we go over in our top speed golf system called the stable fluid spine. And as I come to contact, my upper body needs to be tilted away from the target. So if you look from the middle of my body to the, the upper chest, you'll see the overall tilt of my upper body is going to be away from the target. What this allows you to do is to release 
the golf club in front of your body. And that's allowing, as I'm coming up, if you see this tee, let me choke up on the handle here. As you watch this tee that's sticking out of the end of my club, as I start to work in through contact, notice how the tee is moving upward. Now, that only is able to happen consistently if my body is tilted away slightly. If you're coming over the top, maybe you're coming in steep and over the top and really chopping down in the ball, notice how now my upper body is basically up and down and I'm coming in too steep of an angle of attack. Now look at the T also, it's coming down and chopping into that. So the first thing I want you to do, let's go ahead and get some repetitions in and I'm gonna pause at contact. My shoulders are gonna be square to the ball, my hips are gonna be a little bit open, but I'm gonna focus in on my upper body being tilted back slightly. Get about 100 repetitions in with that and that's gonna allow you to be in a position where you can release down and through the golf ball, have a nice solid but shallow strike and flatten that out. The second piece is going to be what we do with our wrist and our arms. Now that we got the body set up right, we can use the hands correctly. So as I'm coming down into contact with my hands, prior to contact, notice how I have a lot of lag. I got a big angle of lag here. As I'm coming in, my right wrist is bent back. My club is basically parallel to the ground as it's reaching in front of my right leg. Now from here, I'm going to go ahead and release that lag as my, my body's tilted back. And, and because my club is moving up as, the, as it's going down, or the, the grip into my club is moving up as my club is moving forward, that's gonna shallow that out. How I want you to feel this is a very simple motion. I want you to go ahead, make a practice swing, get the club on the ground, what would be about five or six inches behind your ball, and I want you to let that release and stay on the ground as you're coming through there. And notice how if I get some lag, now as I'm releasing that lag, I can really drag that through there nice and consistent and smooth. Two things I want you to focus on as you're doing that. Number one, I want to make sure that that face is square. I don't want to have the face open like this, wide open, and drag it through there. That's going to lead to a big block to the right. I want to go ahead and feel like this face is nice and square all the way through the hitting zone. It's going to lead to a lot of consistency. And number two, I want to make sure that I feel like I'm putting some pressure into my left ankle. That's going to allow you as you're moving that through the contact zone to be really consistent as I'm driving down in my left ankle. Those two things together are really going to help you to move that club through contact very, very consistently. The last piece here that I want to focus in on is my left shoulder. Tile three pieces together and this is going to be really easy for a lot of you to do. I'm going to feel like my left shoulder is moving up and out as my club is releasing down and away. So if we're looking at it from this angle, if I let my shoulders swing on a circular fashion, notice how I'm coming through contact, my left shoulder starts to come up and out. So I'm not changing anything, I'm just allowing it to rotate up and out out of the way. I'll go the same thing from this angle. As I come through contact, my shoulder starts to move up and out. So even though my shoulders are square as I'm hitting the ball, you'll see that this one is higher. It's moving up that way. And as I do that, my club isn't moving up and out this way. My club is releasing and moving square down through the target line and getting that flat spot. So I want my club to be releasing out away from my ball. Great visual for most people, especially if you're struggling with a slice. As this moves up and out, my club releases down and through. I'm going to exaggerate and it's going to go out to the right a little bit. That's an exaggeration. I want it to be moving square but I just want to make sure I don't pull this up and through. I want you to break those down into 100 pieces each. 100, focusing on the body tilted back, good release position. 100, focusing on square face, driving in with the left ankle, putting that pressure in the left ankle, and letting this club move very squarely through contact, about 100 repetitions. And then 100, making a full swing, allowing the shoulder to move up and out, the chest, my left chest to move up and out as my club releases down the target line. So I'm gonna do 100 full swings, just like that. 300 repetitions, it's a lot of work, but let's face it, it's not gonna take that long and we're gonna hit it a lot better. It's definitely worth it. So put in the work, do those repetitions, then we'll tie it all together. We'll go out to the course and hit some golf balls. Alright guys, so I hope you all really enjoyed this video, but I got even more for you, a great bonus. 
I got a video that's going to address the number one mistake I see with lags. If you want to pick up a lot of club head speed, you need to know this mistake and make sure that you don't make it in your own swing. That's going to pop up here in a second. Just click the link that's on the screen or down below in the description. You'll be able to see that absolutely free of charge. Plus, our five video bonus is going to introduce you to the key fundamentals in the Top Speed Golf system. If you like this video, click the like button below, hit the subscribe button so you'll see our latest videos, including Swing Speed Saturday, and I'll see you all in the lag video. Hi guys and welcome back. I'm Clay Ballard and in today's video we're going to talk about one of the absolute worst drills for creating lag. It's a very common drill that I see. And in this drill what we're going to do is we're going to set the wrist very early to create an angle of lag and then we're going to try to hold this throughout the swing. It's one of the worst things that you can, that you can do to build lag. I'm going to talk about the science behind why this is the case and I'm also going to give you a great drill to help you improve your lag all in this video. Let's go ahead and get if started. I do it this way versus holding that position. Exact same thing happens when we're building lag in the golf swing. So what we want to do is throughout the swing, I want to have a very low and wide takeaway. So I'm not going to set my wrist early at all. If you look at a lot of the top players, you look at uh, Adam Scott, very wide takeaway, not very much wrist set at all. You look at Roy McIlroy, you look at Tiger Woods, all these players are using a wide takeaway and not getting very much wrist set so that later in the swing, as we start down, we can increase this wrist set and we're really only gonna max out this angle of lag for a split second in the downswing. Okay, so a three-step drill here. Now, as we get started with this, I want to remind you that the fulcrum in this golf club for getting a massive amount of lag is right at the end of the golf club. This is where I want my hinge point to be. I wanna use the full length of this club to build lag and then release lag. 